And so this is very much off the, off the cuff. And um, so I don't know how it will go. But um, there are some things on my mind. And I felt like sharing them. So that's what I'm doing. I've had an injury in life which has affected things great, great thing. And um, I'm in the middle of recovery from that now. And I don't know how things will turn out. So I'm doing this as an attempt to retain my sanity and make a useful contribution to the world. But that remains to be seen. But I am trying anyway. As I was thinking about existence. Now, I know that one or two people in history and in the current day have attempted to ponder this question, but then um, I want to add my thoughts to, to the mix. So, I'm thinking that, imagine there's a situation in the universe so the first thing is where the universe came from anyway. But we'll leave that aside for a minute. But um, I suppose there was essentially nothing present in the universe. There was no material at all. No stars, no planets, no light, no gravity somehow there could be just nothing. Then, inexplicably, material started to appear. So we had light, we had stars and suns and planets, and oxygen and metal. These things just appeared somehow. And it's totally strange to understand how that could be possible. So at one point there was no star, there was no sun, there was no earth. Somehow the sun was created and then the earth was created. They then operated in orbit around the sun. So we have to wonder where gravity came from as well. And also we have to wonder if those are the right kind of questions to, to be asking. Is it legitimate to ask where things came from? And can we say where did gravity come from? Where did light come from? Where did the earth come from? Are those legitimate, legitimate, legitimate questions? It's quite difficult to speak because of my injury. Maybe it's just not sensible to go down the line of asking where things came from. Because the answers can never be determined, it is a pointless exercise to wonder these things. But, um,. I still think it's worthwhile, but it is frustrating that there can't be any answers that we can be sure make sense. Everything has to be just guesswork. I'm, w I'm wondering if at some point in the future we'll create some technology that will enable us to go back in time and actually see things, see the creation of the world and the creation of the sun and how gravity came into being. There's so many things that it just defies belief how anything could be possible. Yet here we are in existence doing our thing so it's happened, and that's the end of it, I suppose. But I'm trying to imagine a universe where 
absolutely nothing is this when there's no earth and there's no sun and there's no light and there's no gravity and yet somehow these things came into existence and when they they came into existence you then have to wonder how life could begin well I suppose if these other things appeared it's not too much to it's not a stretch to say that life exist came into existence in the same way so somehow on an earth that came into existence in some way and the sun that came into existence and the, the, the earth is orbiting the sun under the force of gravity which came into existence somehow so we have these things in place ready for life to begin so somehow life began and I'd imagine it would be single celled organisms like amoebas and whatever and then one thing leads to another and these single celled organisms grew and became more complex and their needs became greater and their abilities became greater so they started to increase their activity in the world and over a fair bit of time <laughs> um, and I suppose we're talking billions of years these changes happened and these multi-celled organi organisms became more, more complex and somehow eventually came into being as animals I'm wondering what the first animal was so we have single-celled organisms at first they com combined and grew together into multi-cellular organisms and eventually it led to complex creatures and I'm wondering what the first creature could have been would it be a mouse or an insect it's just so amazing that life could be possible considering how one thing leads to another another, another excuse me and there are so many interdependencies like ox oxygen and heat and shelter and food all these things need to be in place before life can exist and so somehow these things came into place initially to create the conditions for life to begin and all of these things are are just couched in terms of somehow and some way it just happened and this is of course why people believe in God because I suppose the idea of life just happening just coming into existence by itself is so difficult to grasp it's so difficult to accept but we have to deal with reality and here we are so we have we need to accept the truth and then it becomes a question of how this truth could be is there a God to explain it all and to our brains that makes a lot more sense than life appearing by itself but it is amazing that the universe could just be and be completely empty 
and then somehow one thing led to another and started creating our reality. Gravity was created, light was created, the stars were created, and of course the sun was created, and the earth came into existence, and then oxygen and rock and water, they just happened. It is such a strange situation to have a reality in front of us that we can't deny and yet have no explanation for it or no explanation that we can prove. We can just wonder about these things. So the universe came into existence by itself the material in the in the universe came into existence spontaneously somehow, and all the interdependencies seem to fall into place. So you'd have the Earth, and somehow you'd have gravity, and somehow you'd have water and land, and then somehow you would have light and warmth. And then somehow life will be will begin, and how it would begin is strange to conceptualize. But obviously, well, I say obviously, but um, that's inappropriate. But realistically, life will begin as single-celled organisms, and then gradually they coalesce into multi-celled organisms. But I'm wondering what the first creature was. The first mobile creature with a brain and a body and the ability to, to move and procreate. How could that have begun? Um, if you have the first mouse or whatever, you need to have two mice created one of each sex and of course you have to wonder how the bi biology came into existence to create more mice so you have this mouse and then you have a mouse of the opposite gender and then you have a brain which would encourage the mouse to procreate somehow the mouse could find food which appeared by itself there's no explanation for where food could have come from so the the plain frustration is never being able to find out how things could just appear. And I'm wondering, seriously, if time travel could ever be achieved, is it a remote possibility? And could you imagine the wonder of being able to go back in time and see these things firsthand? It's just a stunning idea to, to finally know how things happened rather than just guess and suppose and construct theories. It's an incredible frustration to, to not have answers. And obviously we are at a stage in evolution, a stage in our existence and that could change radically. So there was nothing at some point. Then there was an earth and sun and stars at some point. And heat and water and food came into existence. All of these happened and then life started. And somehow became interdependent and able to support itself. So I'm wondering what happens next. 
if you have these things happening in, in order, in the universe, then the contents of the universe, the sun, the moon, the earth, and oxygen and water, and innumerable things that come into existence, and then life comes into existence and is created. But maybe we're just the beginning of a a whole series of events. So we could be near the beginning of the creation process. So you have the universe and then the contents of the universe and you have oxygen and water and food and um, the sun and stars and moon and gravity and oxygen and water. All of these things come into existence and then life begins and grows and reaches the stage it has now. And we are fairly close, this is a, a fair way of putting it, we're fairly close to ending life. We have the ability to end our lives and we don't know if our life is the only life in the universe. So we might possibly end the whole of life in the universe. I think that that's unlikely. It's unlikely that we're the only sentient creatures in the universe. Of course, that's a subject all to itself. But um, what stage are we at in our existence? What comes next? So if you have the Earth appearing somehow, and there's Moon appearing, and then oxygen and water, and food and heat and light, all of these things come into existence. And then life comes into existence, and then begins to develop, and becomes us at some stage. The question I suppose needs to be asked, what comes next? What is the next stage of our evolution? What what new could appear that would change reality fundamentally? So obviously oxygen and water and heat and light came into existence. So what other fundamental things might come into existence? Gravity came into existence by itself. So what similar things, or maybe dissimilar, but um, what other fundamental things could be created is so difficult to imagine how life could change fundamentally with the appearance and creation of new things. New realities, new fundamental things. In the same way that light and oxygen and water came into existence, other things that are as basic and fundamental as that could also come into existence. And these other things could create other intelligences that are very different to us. In fact, intelligence itself could be modified and a new intelligence could be created. So we could be looking at such a such a vast and such an incredible series of creations. There's no reason to believe that our creation is in, is in any sense an endpoint of the process. We could be very near the beginning of the creation process. So you know you have the sun and the earth and stars and gravity and oxygen and water and food, etc. 
all that has been created, eventually life gets created and becomes self-sustaining. But then we have, we have to wonder what might come next. What will come after life? If life is just a step on a, a ladder of sorts, but there could be new sorts of life created. Things created that couldn't be described in terms of being lifelike. So in the same way that life is created, was created, and changed everything, that something new could be created over and above life, completely separate from what life is. And then that could take, take over, if you like, or become dominant, if you like, and replace life as the most valuable thing. Because I think that's what we see. We see, we see life as the most valuable thing in the universe. So even though we're coming close to destroying life, it's still seen as ultimately valuable compared with virtually anything else. But with all these creations, oxygen and water and heat and light and gravity and the earth and the sun and the moon and stars, all that these things are created, life is created and life has developed and evolved evolved over time. So we could be at a certain stage in evolution and there is a, a significant future ahead of us. So we could be, let's say evolution was from one to 100. It could be legitimate to describe our current position as being at point 10. And that maybe that's being quite generous in terms of how much we might develop. So if development of, of humanity, of life as a concept is from 1 to 100, it's quite possible that we're only on point 10, or maybe that's too generous. We might only be at point 2. And so we might have 98 steps or further development to go that will change us into a completely different entity. We, we could be at the very beginning of life's development and what life is could change so drastically. And in the same way we went from single cell organisms to multi-celled organisms and eventually to humanity, we might de develop further into um, a completely different type of organism. And I don't know how to imagine what that could be. Uh, assuming things go on as they have thus far, single-celled organisms, multi-celled organisms, then organisms as complex as humanity, we might develop further into other organisms which are far more complex than humans. Humans could be equivalent to single-celled organisms in terms of how far we might develop. So where we are now might be incredibly basic in terms of where we could go, how we could develop. We could be the equivalent of amoebas, real basic elements of life. And the future of life could be absolutely enormous, astronomical. 
So where could we go? What could we become? What could we be such that we would look at how we are now and see it as backward and underdeveloped in the same way we look at amoebas and other single cell organisms we see it as the beginning of a process to bring us to where we are now but where we are now could be the beginning of a process to take us to some other development which would see us as very basic and the equivalent of an amoeba it is absolutely stunning to imagine how we might further develop and that's of course if we don't destroy ourselves first and the question would then be if we destroy ourselves then are there other life forms out there that could further develop and is it a bit stupid to put it bluntly to say that there isn't other life out there is it basically backward and self-serving to imagine that we're the only creatures in the universe some of these things are absolutely stunning and for, for me the most stunning thing is to imagine that we're just at the beginning of an evolution process I say the beginning but we're at a stage of the evolution process such that we could develop much further and look back on how we are now and see us as very backward and underdeveloped. So the future could be absolutely amazing and virtually impossible to conceptualise. What might the future be?